Hi, I'm Jamie Braithwaite. And I am Matt Larson. And we are here on January 1st. Yes. It is 2024. We're four years away from COVID. Wow. That's true. It was March 13th, 2020. 2020. When the world, at least in Idaho, that's when the world shut down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. New year, yes. new goals. Yes. Let's talk about it. Okay. Actually, wait, I'm sorry. I'm going to stop you. Matt, will you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Dr. Matt Larson. I'm a child psychiatrist. Quick version, that means I went to medical school, delivered babies, did surgery, stitched up people in the ER, and then picked mental health for the thing I wanted to get good at. Worked with adults, worked in the VA, worked with alcoholics, schizophrenia, bipolar, addictions, then anxiety, depression, cutting, suicide. Then I specialized with kids. Some of that with autism, ADHD, some of that divorced parents and the kid doesn't know what to do about it, traumatic car accidents, sadly school shootings. I've worked through all those kinds of things with kids, with their parents. Some kids come in and it's anxiety about going to school. It's depression. Sometimes it's about something, sometimes it's about nothing. But that's what I do on a daily basis. I see kids, I'm a medication specialist, so I figure out is medication indicated or not, give that. I also speak a lot of places. I'm religious, so I speak at a lot of churches, I speak at school districts, school board, city council meetings, stuff like that. Just trying to help people be mentally healthy and avoid the worst outcomes. And you can sing. <laughs> And I sing and I dance and I act in shows. I've got five kids. I've been a foster parent. I am an adoptive parent. Um, and you come to Chocolate Tuesday. I do. I love life. I love living down the street from you. It's been fun. Um, we've known each other a long time. Yes. I don't know if you ever talk about the red chairs on here. Yeah. We've talked about red chairs. Sitting in the red chairs out front, Taco Tuesdays. Yeah. I've learned a lot from you. We talk a lot. We do talk about I love you, your husband, your kids. It's been really fun. And I think I th we've talked a lot individually, you and I, yeah. and we've also talked a lot in group settings with a lot of different people and helped with a lot of solutions throughout yes. our time. So, okay, let's get back to goals. Yes. January 1st. Everybody yes. is probably setting their goals right now. Yes. Because they should have started them yesterday, but they're a day late. Because we were partying. <laughs> yes. It's New Year's Eve. We were. And we celebrated all the things. And we had Brazilian cheese bread. Because yes. that's what we do. Yes. Which I, we should tell them. I do New Year's Eve around the world. So we celebrate midnight in Brazil. And then we go through all of the countries until it gets to New York. And we stop our celebration. So yes. we have a really good time. It's really fun. It's a good time. If you're ever in Idaho Falls, the Braithwaite's. Yes, New come Year's. to our house. Okay, setting goals. What's your advice? Because I know that you've seen a lot. You've you've talked to a lot of people who have gone through a lot of things. Yes. So there's a lot of advice on goals out there. It's, well, it's kind of like self-help books. It's all useful. It's a question of picking the right thing at the right moment. Because you always want to get something that's just outside your current ability. Like your goal should stretch you a little bit. It shouldn't be undoable. Okay. Like if my goal was to retire this year, that is not possible. That's actually not acceptable. Right. Because you'd still want me to work in town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have a lot of work to do. I right. have seven children. I'm 41. I still have my med school debt, my house. Yes. 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 I can't retire. No. No. So that's a goal that, yeah, sounds lovely, not doable. I could set a goal of save this much money, see this many patients, um, do a better job with pick a thing, training new people. So goals should be just outside your comfort zone. Okay. The biggest advice I have for people on goals is make it something worth pursuing and then be okay with doing it poorly. Ooh. Tell us more about that. One of my favorite phrases is to change the phrase, anything worth doing is worth doing well. Change it to anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. Okay. Like, for example, most people I know that are adults over age 30 want to lose weight. <laughs> that seems like it's the whole, everyone. So if we're talking about weight loss, 
weight loss is a good goal for a lot of people. The real good goal should be health. Mm. Like if you want to go into the scientific side of blood sugar, not having blood sugar spikes, you don't have insulin spikes, you don't have cortisol spikes. So you don't get the stress hormone leading to the hypertension, leading to the type two diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people just settle with weight. Yeah. I want to lose 25 pounds or whatever it is. Yeah. Yes. I actually know a lot about this because I got a type one diabetic, right? right. And so when people say things like this, it, it really gets, I also have a lot of girls and not causing eating disorders is, you know, maybe one of my goals in life. Right. And how, as a mother of teenage daughters, do I do that? And that's kind of part of Joyrific is like food and nutrition is an important part. Right. Physical function is an important part. Weight is just the gravity pull of your body to the earth. Right. Weight's a number. It represents one thing. If you are healthy, your weight is likely to end up in the healthy range. Mm -hmm. So if you are sleeping well and eating healthy foods and exercising... If you're doing the right goals, the result will be the weight you want. Yes. Now, if you want something unhealthy, you can't get there yes. in a healthy way. Yes. But most people have a 30 to 40 pound range that they're probably healthy in. And you just got to get in the range. Yeah, I like that. So if people are making a weight goal, like I have tons of friends that are overweight. I've been overweight for years. I was usually about 20, 30 pounds overweight and nobody knows it. Because I look, I look fair, I look fine, I'm good. Yeah. But I got scared. I had friends a year ago die of a heart attack and a stroke in their 40s. I was like, I want to change. So years ago, <clears throat> I did a crash diet, lost all the weight. I won the weight loss competition at work. I was doing P90X and I was going to run a marathon and I had all these big goals. And I lost like 40 pounds in three months. It was amazing. I looked magnificent. Everybody told me how great I looked. A diet like that is never sustainable. Six months later, the weight was back. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I felt miserable. And I'd bought all the new clothes at the low weight. Oh, no. And then they sat in my drawer for two years, three years, four years. I never fit in them again. Yeah. It caused the self-esteem to be miserable. Yes. Yes. And I was like, well, I didn't do it in a healthy way. You failed. Which then messed with my body, which then messed with my mind. And I was like, well, now I'm a failure in every way possible. Yes. <laughs> Physical and mental and all the things. Yes. So as people create these goals, how do we set ourselves up to not feel like a failure? Right. And this is where you have to pick something that you don't quit. Like I'll read all the medical research. This says things like, you should exercise an hour a day, five days a week. I believe that. If that is accurate, then that would be the healthiest. I'm not doing that. If you asked me through all of COVID, I exercised none. I stopped running. I stopped lifting. I didn't go to the gym. I didn't do any cardio, anything. When I wanted to lose weight, I was like, if I go to the gym and exercise hard, I will do it for about a week or two and then I'll quit. Mm -hmm. Like I've always done. I'll exercise too hard. I'll be sore. I'll be miserable. So instead I said, I'm going to exercise for five minutes a day, five days a week. My wife laughed at me because we have a treadmill downstairs that usually just you hang clothes on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I went downstairs and I got on the treadmill. I ran five minutes and I got off. I didn't even run long enough to sweat. Yeah. Yeah. It was so short, but I did it and I did it for three or four weeks in a row. Wow. Oh. And I could feel a little difference. First, I felt the pain in my back and my legs and the places that yeah. I needed to stretch. And then I got up to 10 minutes a day. So you did increase it. I did increase it. But I started with something I could sustain. I could do long term. Mm -hmm. And I kept going. And then I got sick of running. And I was like, I read more on health. And it said, if you want to help your metabolism, resistance training, weights, does better than cardio. Okay. I was like, well, I've done cardio for 40 years. Maybe I should try something else. Because <laughs> that's the only thing I've ever done was run. Yeah. So I thought, let's try lifting. So I got some dumbbells mm -hmm. and looked up different exercises you can do with dumbbells. And I just started going. And I got to that. I was doing 15 minutes a day at first. I got to 20. And now I'm doing about 20 to 25 minutes a day. Willingly. Willingly. Five days a week. I do five days a week 
I, I have multiple jobs that have 7 a.m. meetings. If I have a 7 a.m. meeting, I don't exercise. Okay. Because I can't cheat my sleep. Oh, I like that. Because if I cheat sleep, I'll quit. Because mm. I'll be exhausted. That's really... I, I like want you to say that again. That's so good. <laughs> you can't fix one goal by cheating another. Rob Peter to pay Paul. Exactly. If you're robbing family time to exercise, if you're robbing sleep to exercise, if you're rob yes, you have to balance. We only have we all have the same number of hours in a day. Mm -hmm. But if you cheat one thing too much, you will become unhealthy. It will be unbalanced, and you will quit. I like that. Earlier, you talked about obsessions, and anything can be an obsession. Yes. So let's talk about that with goal setting. Right. You can make anything excessive. I went to a Christian college. The president of the college said, if you go to every spiritual activity on campus, you will fail your classes and will kick you out of school. Because <laughs> he's like, there's a devotional, a scripture reading, a hymn singing all the time. Bible study, Bible prayer study. There's group. There's always something. But then he said, on the other side of the coin, if you do only academics and do no spirituality, it's a Christian college. We will also <laughs> kick you out of school. Fail you. <laughs> Fail. So it was making the point, he said, you can spend too much time on anything. You can spend too much time on your family if you don't go to work and get the money to pay for the house. Yeah. All the time you spent with your kids doesn't help if you're homeless. Yeah. Or if you have a house and you only spend time cleaning it. Right. Then you miss all the times with your kids. It's like everyone's seen the plaque that says, please excuse the mess. We're making memories. Yes. Of the plaque that says, please excuse the mess. Our standards have lowered with each child. <laughs> and I have seven children. My <laughs> standards have lowered. Right. But as you have more kids, you do realize this is not the moment to clean. Yeah. It's like when you realize this is not the moment to lecture. And when you're making goals, you have to balance life. You're like, I'm not willing to drop my kids, my job, my pick of the thing. And that's like when I'm telling people about weight loss, I tell them, what's a simple way to lose weight? Eat more food that's healthy and start exercising a little bit. Simple way to do that. Exercise five minutes, a couple days a week. I need an extra banana before every meal. That's awesome. If you don't like bananas, make it apples, make it cucumbers, make it, pick your fruit yeah. or vegetable, anything. But if you add more healthy food before the meal, you'll eat less junk. Or you won't go back for seconds and thirds so many times. Like lasagna is amazing. But two or three helpings, it's all carbs. Mm -hmm. Not the healthiest thing. Eat a fruit or vegetable before and then have the piece of lasagna. And it's awesome. And you're full. Mm -hmm. And you're not restraining yourself. We're trying to deal with the hunger. Because almost nobody succeeds long-term hungry. Yeah. We eat. Oh, we get hangry too. Right. <laughs> so eat a little more healthy food so you're full and there's more health. Exercise a little bit. Do it poorly. Not perfectly. Exactly. Perfect is great. Perfect practice is great. If you can do perfect, wonderful. Praises to you. Yeah. Most of us can't. Yeah. And I am so much healthier now than a year ago because I was willing to do it poorly. That's awesome. So I would love to know what everybody's goals are for this year. So add a comment in or put that in somehow, social media, you get it. Add a comment of what your goals are for this year. And we will bring Matt back every Monday for a podcast on mental health and conversation starters. So I know this will be a sneak peek because we're at time. But conversation starters for what to do with your family, your kids, your grandkids, anybody, teachers, all kinds of people. Give us a little sneak peek. Parents come to me all the time asking, how do I talk to my kid about blank? I mean, the classic example is the birds and the bees. But phones or dating or school, college, sex and gender, religion, uh, what to do with our uncle that's an alcoholic that everybody's not talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> right? There's tons of topics that are difficult to bring up. And we're going to talk about the conversation starters. How to start the important conversations so they happen and they're productive. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. We will see you next week. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs>